Uh, this is Saqib Zulfikar. I uh, wanted to do a quick tutorial on an image I had shot uh, a few weeks ago and I had promised to show how I processed it uh, just to give you an idea. This was the image that I had uploaded and uh, and uh, today we'll be talking about how I got this and uh, as you can see it is a uh, basically a tutorial on exposure blending and I wanted to keep it simple it's just so that <coughs> not a lot of Photoshop uh, is ended up using so what I would be doing mostly today would be focusing on uh, merging using uh, the raw raw files with Adobe Camera Raw and that is brought into Photoshop so it would be pretty much uh, changing the raw files as uh, smart objects and uh, I'll show you how to do it uh, just to start off uh, these were the shots that I took the other day so uh, as you might see this is one this is really clearly overexposed this is another one this seems to be uh, exposed properly for the mid area but the foreground is uh, dark and this was the process one so and okay. and uh, this was another one that I just uh, processed so uh, the whole idea was some of the shots have foreground properly exposed and some of them have the background properly exposed so we would combine the two to uh, get a balanced uh, image this particular shot <coughs> I like the wave uh, here in this one so I wanted to use this one as the middle ground and the foreground wasn't too bad so the foreground because of the fact that this was overexposed there's some details in the foreground so that we might end up using and but the background as you can see is all blown out so that's not something usable you can try to salvage it in Adobe Camera Raw uh, by lowering the exposure of the background but it turns dark and doesn't look natural so what I would do is you would use this this shot which was pretty much uh, the same angle and on a tripod so we can use this for the sky so what I ended up doing was I created a new folder here and I moved all the files here so these were the three files one two and three as you can see it's the same frame but one has uh, foreground and the wave and the other one has the background so I ended up choosing these two shots so uh, I would be using Adobe Camera Raw as I said uh, if you are new to Photoshop don't know this so this is probably would be an intermediate level tutorial and it expects people to know a little bit about uh, Photoshop and processing images in Camera Raw and uh, and if you are looking for a beginner just leave a comment below of the, of the particular area you're interested in and I'll try to do that in the future so so I will also try to explain uh, questions uh, if you ask some regarding the video so uh, once I get it uploaded so here we go so so these are the two shots I chose merely because this one was normal exposed but it's what the sky was a little bit br too bright this one was sky was okay that i wanted to use and this one was the foreground away that i wanted to use so we can select both of them by c pressing shift and the arrow key or you can just use a command and then another c click command to select the both the shots and then control r would open up in control Adobe Camera Raw. You can also do this in uh, in uh, on the raw, open in Raw Camera Raw. So, anyhow, Control A, choose both files because you want to do changes for both the images at the same time. Uh, first thing I look at is the exposure. So this is the exposure originally was at 5950K which looks a little bit blue to me so 
I will try to see what happens if I do it cloudy. It still looks blue. And auto, which I found was yet better. So we use auto. Next would be curves. I'm not going to mess with that for now. Sharpening, just the usual 40. And then with mask, always with when you do a sharpening, it, it sh sharpens everything. But if you hold the Alt key and drag the mask, it will, sh it will show the area that it will sharp. White area is the sharpened area. Black it will leave out. So, so the sky is pretty much has no detail there. So you might as well not sharpen there. So, so you can go more aggressively. So I'll just leave it there. So, so sharpen there. Zoom in. You can see there's a little bit of noise, even though it was shot at ISO. 50 so a little bit will help smooth that out so there we go saturation we're not going to play with that lens correction yes so here we can see that the image is a little bit curved so enable lens profile correct correction and then show grid so just to make sure the horizon is straight you can see here that the horizon is not straight this is horizon line so it's tilted towards the far side so in manual if you tilt it such a way that it's balanced on both sides So this looks pretty much balanced and sometimes pressing auto does wonders so it automatically selects everything and then chooses the best uh, best correction for the lens with the auto with auto so this looks pretty good so it looks pretty straight yeah it looks pretty straight so we'll go with this just to make sure that both images are selected select all sync settings check all okay so make sure that both of these files are have the same amount of corrections in them. other color cal calibration adobe faithful usually works best so you generally end up using that one and just for giggles I'm going to start camera standard this also looks reasonable so I'll just go with camera standard so these are pretty much what I would change in camera raw basic stuff uh, profile lens correction no nothing here sharpening noise and then white balance without messing with any of these because you're going to fix the exposure afterwards select ok make sure they both look the same so yeah so what we're going to do now is open each file individually so let's say this one control o opens the file generally you would just open the file like this but in this particular place we're going to hold down the shift key and open as a smart object open object what this gives us is we can go back and forth from photoshop into the raw file without changing any pixels into in photoshop so the original file retains its its pixels it's only that it's only the modifications uh, add-ons that happen not but the raw file retains its uh, its its original status so the first file is opened and then we open the second file the same way control open object shift and then open as an object so as in Photoshop we have both of these files opened as smart objects so you can see that over here 
window arrange tile vertically so this is the first file this is the second file so what we do is we hold the shift key and drop the file oh yeah so we drop the file over here holding the shift key so going back so what I did was I what I did was I selected the file from one screen and I dragged it onto the other one so here you can see these both files are now in the same window within Photoshop and this one we don't know because we just dragged it to on the other side so we can go just go ahead and close this don't save so now we have this file opened and then this file both of them opened and same as layers now so like we said we would like to take the sky from one shot and then the rest of this scene from the other one don't worry about this is that this is overexposed right now we'll fix that so what we do is we add a mask on the top one top layer this hides and we did a alt mask so which inverts the mask and then you know hides everything in order to sh show the sky we just take the gradient tool over here and then we drag it down oh sorry so what I will do is we will show the whole scene and then just hide the sky so it's so it so the bottom one bottom layer can go can see through we can see through the bottom layer so now here we can see that the sky looks good I mean if you want to we can try another couple of times to see if it looks natural so yeah I would probably go with this one if you don't like it you can always go back do a control shift Z go back and then start all over you can also find the same things from Windows and then history over here you can go back to where you, to the step that you would like to go back to so let's just say we want to show gradient over here so what the gradient does it gives a natural uh, gradient of dark to shadows so now the sky seems to be pretty reasonable so maybe just a little bit over here but the foreground is quite quite bright especially this this middle section for that what we can do is since this is where the overexpose is the overexpose exposure is so we can just double click on this this image this layer and this opens the image within Adobe Camera Raw so you can you get the same controls and everything you can go in and fix whatever you want to fix over here so here you can lower the exposure let's say we want to lower it up to here so this looks reasonable and also you can probably play around like yeah, I like to I like to play around with the with the highlight slider just to get some more pop and then darken this so this gives you more contrast in the rays so I did highlight played with the highlights so so don't worry worry about the sky because that's already masked out so and then we can if you wanted to we can change the white balance a little bit to bluish or yellowish so so you see so take some oil 
Okay, so now it looks pretty consistent with the with the sky. So now we've got the sky normally exposed. We have the middle ground properly exposed, but the foreground became dark because of the fact that we changed the whole thing. This uh, this uh, this bright layer. The option we have, we can right click and new smart object via copy. So this creates another layer which is based on the same uh, original layer. So we go, we can similarly we can go back and check uh, which one uh, uh, th the same original raw file to change. So. If I just moved it down over here so so what I want to do is show the rocks so what I do is I put a layer mask over here and then I go back and open this original layer which was overexposed layer and I reset the darkening that I had done and also I modify the highlights a little bit too so that the rocks in the foreground a little bit have a little bit of shine on them you won't see this because the top layer is covering this layer completely so the other way to see this this new modification if you can see this now over here is if you mask this section to reveal or or hide the top layer so that the lower level lower layer can be revealed so for that you take a brush and generally an opacity of 30% that I use black as as the paint and then just paint top of this layer so it's taking a while What I did was I moved the layer on top so that it becomes easier for it to reveal. So because this is the overexposed layer, I made it dark. The mask is black, so everything is hidden. So now you can just paint white on it so that that can be revealed in the for that particular layer, just this area nothing else so for b basically what I did was I, I disabled this mask you can also go ahead and just delete this so basically this would be your mid tones mid exposure or normal exposure actually this is under exposure with the sky this would be your normal and this would be your or exposure layer so so you can see that the rocks in the foreground look much better so uh, it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit so 
you do a select black and then just make it look natural and just bring out details over here change the chromatic size so that it looks natural darken the lower edges and if we can think that we need more highlights in the foreground we can do that I think I just want to lower the exposure a little bit for the foreground and increase the highlights So this basically becomes the image. So we now have a reasonably exposed foreground. This is details in the rocks. We've got the wave, middle ground, and then we have the sky properly exposed. At this stage, we can still play with it without doing anything in Photoshop uh, by just looking, by just working on a raw image. Uh, for example, for the middle ground. Let's say we wanted more contrast over here. So for that, you can go to this layer and then increase the highlights. And darken the darks. And also, just add a little bit of clarity for the texture. And if you want to, we could probably just add a little bit of warmth. There we go. Let's see how it looks as a final product. Hmm. So, you know, we can always go see if, if that change made sense or not so history this is what it looks like this is what it looks like now so i think i'm going to go with with this but i'm just going to add a little bit more saturation to it So there we go. So now this is pretty much uh, what the image looks like. And we can, and we're done with the, with the, with the raw processing. We can merge all the visible layers, Control, Alt, Command, E. This merges all the layers. And then we can st start doing the final finishing, touches on it. So for example, if you think this is too blue, you can desaturate it with the sponge button or sponge tool over here, sponge, sponge tool. So you can saturate or desaturate, desaturate 20% and then desaturate the blue sections from it. This is only if you, if you want to, otherwise you don't have to. I mean, I figured it was a little bit too blue, so that's why I'm I'm desaturating it. And plus, I this is since this is my main subject, I want to keep retain the texture and the saturation here and remove it from elsewhere. Saturation done. I 
the next step is doing a dodge for the highlights this is to bring out these this texture in the waves so this will highlight the white white area in the waves this will give you the, give the curve so we can do this over here because the wave splashing was bright so just selecting the highlights with the lower exposure would would help bring that out and similarly we can we can burn the highlights where this too too bright so for example this area is too bright we just burn this area in so it becomes darker burn this area in this becomes darker this area and then a little bit here any area that you don't want the eye to go because the eye goes to the brightest areas and high contrast and saturated areas so this is pretty much what you want the most high contrast saturation and and brightness so this is what it looked like before this is what it looks like after the dog and bird and and saturation adjustments so you can sharpen it you can certainly sharpen it in a new layer it's controlled shift alt command e on the mac uh, overlay becomes layer mode control u to desaturate the top layer filter other high pass and uh, this is what I use for sharpening most of the time so so you can see before sharpening after sharpening and the foreground looks pretty sharp now and you can also do a mask over here and then to select out any the sky from being sharpened so do it just paint black in the sky so the sky won't be sharpened so what I do see is there are some spots here so probably should have done this in, uh, in raw so but uh, it's no biggie you can do it here now so take the clone tool this is the spot healing brush if you want to keep the bird, keep it, otherwise just click on it and that will disappear. So that is sharpened. Mm. Exposure merged using smart objects and exposure blended. And if you think this is all looking good, just do a layer, flatten image and then export as export for web so this is what I'd like to do and then select a size let's say 124 and uh, this will look like 100% by cubic automatic is which is what I use convert to sRGB copyright and contact info export all and I will save it in my JPEG folder and 
just call it tutorial. This was it, so let me know uh, if there are any questions. Uh, I'll be happy to answer that. So I do understand this was a little bit advanced, so there's a lot of things. I'm assuming that you already know about Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw, but uh, primarily focusing on how to merge uh, different exposures without having, you know, making it look like a, a, an artificial HDR. As you can see, the, all of this was taken from the real image without having to not do any changes so these are real pieces but they were different exposed exposure that was done bracketed so hope you liked the tutorial until next time take care bye bye